In the wake of a crisis, a new world has been born, and its greatest champions are missing in action. But this is not a world without heroes. In 2006, DC Comics annihilated its entire status quo in the pages of Infinite Crisis, restructuring the company's fictional multiverse and relaunching all of its titles with a slew of new stories set one year after the Cataclysm. While this approach was undoubtedly successful, pulling in new readers and driving record sales for the company, DC had already begun plans to explore the events of this missing year, examining what happened to Earth's missing heroes and how their world evolved in their absence. From these questions came 52, a year-long series that unfolded over the course of weekly issues, each detailing the real-time changes of the characters and worlds of the new DC Universe. Brought to life by an all-star roster of writers, artists, and editorial staff, 52 is a story both intimate and epic in scope, celebrating decades of storytelling while marching forward in a bold new direction. As a story built on several of the company's lesser-known characters, 52 is often eclipsed by DC's other, more high-profile works, namely the crisis events that bookend it. But in the years since its release, 52's ambition and quality have elevated its reputation as a transformation of what came before and an exploration of the true measure of heroism. The road to 52 was paved with a multitude of transformative shifts within DC Comics. The widespread success of Infinite Crisis prompted the company to return to massive, line-wide crossovers, the likes of which hadn't been seen since the 1990s. The publisher's next initiative, one year later, was designed as a clean slate for their lineup, leaping every story ahead by one year to give a decent jumping-on point for new readers while capitalizing on the massive changes brought by the crisis. Not long after, editors began pitching a series to bridge the gap between the two crossovers. But instead of standard monthly releases, the publisher would tell its story across 52 weekly installments. From the beginning, DC Editorial knew that 52's scope and schedule would be too much for a single writer to handle, prompting then-executive editor Dan DiDio to approach four major players within the company. Grant Morrison, fresh off a run on the cosmic all-star Superman, Greg Rucka, famous for grounded stories like Gotham Central, Mark Wade, who had recently signed exclusively for DC, and Jeff Johns, who had previously helmed the successful Infinite Crisis. With the four writers quickly elevated to editorial positions, the intent of 52 was clear. More than just a crossover, this was their chance to leave a galaxy-sized stamp on the history of the DC Universe. To quote Morrison, I couldn't say no. I generally trust Dan's judgement when he offers me something and the idea of collaborating with three of the best writers in mainstream comics were too cool to refuse. This was an unmissable opportunity to work with three of my peers at the height of their talents. Pulling from every era and corner of the DC Universe, the team behind 52 builds its story on the living, breathing legacy of their fiction. With more famous heroes like Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman missing in action, forgotten heroes step up to fill the void and carry their healing world into a new era. Weaving together the stories of countless characters, 52 becomes a story of survival, both for the DC Universe and the many heroes, both big and small, who step up to defend it. Are you ready? Picking up in the aftermath of an explosive multiversal war, 52 begins with a slow burn that quickly erupts into a sprawling epic. As heroes, villains, sidekicks, and civilians all grasp for a return to normal, the real toll of the crisis is made apparent. Many of Earth's champions, including the members of the Trinity, are still missing in action, and the heroes who made it back from the crisis have been left marked by the cataclysm. The first weeks of 52 are dedicated to depicting the Trinity's absence. As characters across the globe try to rebuild after the crisis, 
they all come to realize just how much darker the world's gotten without its heroes. So the short of it is, after years and years of hitting and running, all the supervillains, and I mean all of them, teamed up, declared all-out war on the White Hats, picked us off in twos and threes before mounting an attack the likes of which should, by all rights, have ripped this planet in half. So basically, we just came back from the brink of annihilation. You know, when you play like that, no wonder we're pretty much exhausted. But the danger's passed. The good guys won their biggest fight ever. Yep. And we're safe again. Relatively speaking. Okay, so when do things go back to normal? Today, DC's brand is synonymous with the heroes of the Justice League, but 52's strength as a series comes from exploring their absence. In place of a single protagonist or team, 52's creators build the series around an ensemble of second stringers, each inhabiting a corner of the DC universe that steadily transforms in the absence of the missing heroes. Once home to Superman, Metropolis is now torn between the increasingly arrogant Booster Gold, the mysterious Supernova, and the Lex Luthor-sponsored Infinity Inc. The formerly mob-run Gotham City becomes a base for Intergang and their new religion of crime, along with the enigmatic new Batwoman. The emergence of a cult with ties to Sue Dibney puts the former elongated man on a dark path into the world of magic. And beyond, Black Adam begins building his own Shazam family, attempting to turn over a new leaf as the new ruler of Kondok. While the sheer number of plot threads are enough to potentially overwhelm readers, the series writers put an incredible amount of care into 52's accessibility and pacing. While its predecessor was a cosmic opera with a relentless pace, 52's story is a slow burn drama. With each week investing readers in these forgotten characters and their respective threads that steadily weave together into a master story about the true measure of heroism. Initially planned as four distinct scripts, a spirit of collaboration steadily grew between 52's creators, which led to a reshaping of their entire creative process. Instead of plotting entire issues on their own, the writers began taking allotments within each issue to tell portions of the story. These plots would then be broken down by artist Keith Giffen, who would coordinate the workload across a bevy of fellow illustrators. As a result, the story becomes something much more well-rounded. Every creator's fingerprints are visible, but the plot flows with an unparalleled sense of unity. My direct input doesn't start until I actually take the first issue and begin breaking it down, states Giffen. Right now, I'm sitting back while the writers find their level of comfort in terms of story approach and workload division, and still no egos in sight. Grant Morrison put it best, I feel like I'm in a band. The plot's measured cohesiveness is what lets the story easily hop between its ensemble's perspectives, from the grounded journeys of Rene Montoya and Question, to the archetypal heroics of Booster Gold and Steel, to the cosmic odyssey of missing leaguers like Adam Strange, Animal Man, and Starfire, all without slowing down. While each story feels distinct from one another, they're all bound by the collective loss of the crisis, as well as their struggles to rise to the occasion. It's these tests of heroism that steadily push these stories together, as new and dangerous threats arise over the story's 52-week timeline. More than just physical dangers, these challenges are specifically designed to push the characters into new territory. Pursuing Intergang's techno-religious operations elevates Montoya from former cop to globe-trotting superhero. Ralph Dibney's hunt for truth leads him into a world of mysticism. Steel has to reckon with the expectations he's put on his protege, who ends up joining Luthor's Infinity Inc. team, and the missing leaguers are forced to choose between their path home and stopping the cosmic onslaught of Lady Styx. Individually, 52's components are fairly straightforward, but it's the story's interconnected presentation that makes it more than just the sum of its parts. While every character has their own journey, the writers weave these threads together throughout the book, further investing the readers in the ensemble before tightening the narrative around them. Through Vic Sage's terminal diagnosis, Booster Gold's seeming ignoble death and his partner Skeet's supervillain turn, the terror of Luthor's endgame, and the shocking death of Black Adam's new family, each story issues devastating trials by fire for its protagonists. For some, these trials only strengthen their heroic resolve, 
allowing them to discover and affirm who they are. But for others, the toll is too much, and they let their grief and hurt slowly corrupt them. This tragic theme is shown best through Black Adam, who falls into rage and despair after the death of his family, and sets himself to decimating those unworthy of his heroism. It wasn't you, was it? If you murdered that country, you know you can never go back. You can never watch over Kondok again. You can never protect your people. Tell me it wasn't you. They wanted a war, Albert. I'm going to give it to them. Building directly on the themes of Infinite Crisis, 52's story is marked by a steady darkening of the DC Universe, as the stakes of the series grow in scope and terror. But in the book's climax, marked by the shocking return of Booster Gold, the colorful optimism of DC's past finally begins to shine through. Working with a time-traveling Rip Hunter, Booster not only saves his old partner, but witnesses the birth of an all-new multiverse. And as this multiverse writes itself, the heroes of the New Earth finally begin to rally. In spite of their grim odds, the Lost Leaguers manage to defeat Lady Styx and return home. Adam's rampage is finally halted by the heroes of the world, who've joined with the newly reassembled JSA. Steel, along with his niece Natasha and the Titans, shut down Luthor's Everyman project. Spurred on by the question's death, Montoya takes up his mantle, working with the new Batwoman to dismantle Intergang. And Ralph Dibney, while cut down in the line of duty, is finally reunited with his wife as a ghostly detective. After a devastating year, the heroes of the DC Universe have finally returned, albeit transformed but stronger than ever. That's all the fix it required? Dude, we watched all of reality get splintered. Aren't you worried that so much is broken? Broken or opened? Look around you, Booster. There's so much more happening out there than we could ever have imagined. That's not broken. That's the way things should be. Welcome to a multiverse of possibility, Booster. Welcome home. Fifty Two is an undoubtedly well-crafted love letter to the unsung heroes of the DC Universe, but it holds a more bittersweet legacy when held up against the current state of the company. Behind-the-scenes issues plagued the book from the start, namely differences between the creators and executives like DiDio, who went as far as to replace editor Steve Wacker with the less senior editor Michael Siglin in an effort to co-opt the series. Said Mark Wade, Dan, who first championed the concept, hated what we were doing hated 52, would storm up and down the halls telling everyone how much he hated it. And Steve, God bless him, kept us out of the loop on that particular drama. When Steve left, that was a huge thing for me personally, recounts Rucka. I do think that it changed the project. There were a lot of factors involved with how it happened and why it happened. But let's just say I was not happy with DC allowing the situation to come about the way it did. Tensions between creators and editorial only worsened over time, leading to Wade and Rucka's eventual break with the publisher. While DiDio and Johns remained with DC, rising to publisher and CCO respectively, the company suffered a number of setbacks, the most notable being allegations of misconduct against both creators, as well as the mass firings of employees by parent company AT&T, nicknamed the DC Bloodbath. In truth, it's been a dark decade for DC Comics, and with even more restructuring announced, it's uncertain what the future may hold for the company. Still, looking back at 52's success in spite of its troubled creation, one can't help but feel hopeful about DC's next chapter. As long as there are people inside the company who fight for their fellow creators and push for brave, bold new stories, then there's a chance we'll be exploring that multiverse of possibilities for years to come. Hi everyone, thanks for checking out my video on the 52 miniseries. I had a lot of fun revisiting this, seeing how it all came together and how each of the creators left their own mark on DC after it was released. Really puts things into perspective. 
If you like this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Every little bit helps the channel out immensely. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay heroic.